welcome back to another episode. Like and subscribe and hit that bell. Today we got an 11 home room, 11 and 13, so I say 2014. Dodge Durango all wheel drive. What are we doing to it? Thermostat and gas in the housing. Saw it as a hole because obviously it's a nightmare. So, first thing you do is Take off this Lego set, pop it off, just literally pull up on it. You'll see one, two, three, four. That one's already broke, so we can't help that. Put that back on. Next thing you're gonna do, find it. So it goes from here, boom, it's right there. So we gotta move this bad boy. So the next thing we're gonna do is figure out how we move this. We gotta disconnect that, that, and that. Don't leave behind dry. Like I said, you're gonna take that off, pull that out the way. Boom. Over here, pop this little thing out. Undo this, spring low, pull back. You have to take this safety clip off first. You literally just pry it up. You don't have to put that back in. And then underneath, you're gonna push in the white area. Right here, push that in, boom, boom. And then pull back, boom, that's out the way. That's out the way. Uh, this one's being a son of a monkey. I got that center didn't come out. Um, so I'm gonna get a screwdriver flathead under there and pry up to get the lock out. A uh, real small one would be really nice. This drawer is a hot mess at this moment in life. Uh, we're not gonna find a flathead. We're gonna find seven million Phillips heads. Right. Phillips heads will work too. And what I was saying is just literally, I'm gonna get under and pry out the lock. And of course it doesn't wanna move. Well, that's not coming off, so we'll deal with that on a different different level. That's out, that's out. This has a rubber grommet that holds this one here. Weasel that off, literally left to right, left to right, left to right, boom, that's off. See how it just sticks in there like a rubber grommet, just jams through. And then pull this puppy out the way, let's check underneath, make sure how we're connected. Another rubber grommet that just sticks through, so get a good yank. And we can leave that sensor hooked up, but that's where you're yanking up on to get that off. Boom, there she is, right plain as day. Now you need a catch pan or something underneath, because obviously when we disconnect this hose, we're gonna have what? We're gonna have a leak. We're gonna pop this off, two bolts, put that bad boy in and be done. We're gonna try to do it nice and fast so we don't lose a lot of coolant, because uh, they didn't bring coolant. So we'll have to get some. I'll edit this down later. Believe they're 10 millimeters. Awesome, you guys have an impact gun of sorts because. I said it'd be awesome if you had an impact gun of sorts because. You jam these off and on faster. I'm just cracking them both to make sure that they crack loose and then lightly tightening them. Alright, I want to tack on that hose right down. Now the thermostat's in here, so if you've been driving this thing, it's hot. The fluid's hot. Um, you might want to crack this, crack the radiator cap. Um, I'm not cracking the radiator cap. Personally, mine's a little cool, but if you crack the radiator cap, it's going to let it flow a lot faster. Uh, it's going to open up a funnel and it's going to let it flow faster. We're not doing that. Paper movers. We're going to remove this clamp. Now, just bring it back a good bit there. Put it back so it's out of the way. Keep the pliers handy. And we're going to get the package open so we're ready. Jump with me. Double check your gaze gets in there in a good spot. Remember that's in there. Look at that. That looks like shit. Straighten that out for him. It's weird. Alright, here we go. Almost to the wall. Always 
to make sure you're going the right direction. Now we're going to start the leak. Oh. Lift that to the moon. That won't leak until, until it's ready to. So we pull the radic the thermostat's broken so it's wide open. Put the two bolts in this. Do not hammer these down. Light. Light. I'll finish them with a wrench. Now take the hose off, slide it on. Very minimum cooling. As hot as it is, it should be open. As hot as it is, it should be open, but it's not. So, all that steam is from the cooling. It was nice and warm hitting everything. Bring this bad boy up. These weird clamps I try to always stick in the exact spot they came off. Because I swear they don't like to seal at different angles and different spots. So you can see where it was, line it up, drop it, boom. That should be good. Get yourself a ratchet. Might be a torque for this. I've never done it, but I'm sure there's a torque. There's a torque for everything in the world. I swear to it. It's like sometimes they do it just to do. But my torque on these is snuggums. And if you want, I guess you could put Loctite on them or RTD. But I've never had a problem with these snuggums. Just use your common sense. If you're doing this job. Your brain functions to a point. I actually don't like the way this hose plate is sitting on the hose. More like the hose. It's sitting. The way it came off, there it goes. I mean, that's basically it. I'm going to crack the cap. Fill the uh, cooling up.
cap and letting it sit. You can see that over there. Uh, right there, yeah, throwing that letting it sit. It's not what you're going to want to do because antifreeze does not like to dilute and dry out. You're going to get water and squirt, squirt it on the engine. Yes, I said put water on the engine. The best bet is to put water where you took the antifreeze off. It's pretty easy antifreeze. Pour it on there. Don't dump the whole motor. But just dump it on the, the motor where the antifreeze is. It'll help it. It'll help it move bye bye. Checking the belt while we're here. Quick plans. Put this baby back over. Clear this out of your way. Jam it on back here first. Put your hand underneath. Make sure the nipple underneath goes in the hole. And then no palm. Put this one back in. Slide this bad boy back on. You might want to do that when it's yeah, that worked out easy. I was gonna say do it when it's off, but it wasn't in our way really. Put the hose back on. I guess we're gonna do it for the video. We're gonna put the lock back in. Lock back in. Put this back in. Slide this clip back in. Make back secure. Everything's hooked up. We're gonna tighten them two down. Good film sets are or flat it's hard to come by. You could also use eight millimeter or ten. I think these are ain't that messed up. The good tool is under the camera. We had it the whole time. Make sure you're all the way on, take your fingers up front around the bottom of that, make sure it's good. a live video pretty much except for the first two little cutouts but this is gonna be a time frame what's gonna take to do this job we're pretty much done now uh we're just gonna keep an eye on the brad air cap fill it a couple more times until it's full we'll run it we'll let it heat up and we'll fill it again make sure you're using the appropriate coolant I got a 55 gallon drum. This is just a uh, empty bottle I use. I fill it. My man was having problems and other problems, including starting problems. So, I'm sorry, remote stuff. When the check engine light is on in these year cars, it does not like to start remotely, which I kind of dig and I kind of like it. So, I'm going to go off camera. Not really nothing scientific to show you next. We're going to back out. We're gonna wet the engine just there, wet down there in the uh, valley, try to get as much antifreeze out of there as possible. Water will dry out and dissipate in no time. And uh, there you go, man, like and subscribe. Hope this helps somebody. Thermostat and gasket, it did have a check engine code for thermostat, so there you go. Nowadays, cars with a remote start will not start with a check engine light.